So not too long ago, I did a video on Unum Labs by Filippo Sorcinelli. I'm gonna leave a card to that video up here if you're interested, but I think it's one of the best incense fragrances on the market currently. Here, we're gonna be taking a look at a fragrance that came out a few years after that. This one goes back to 2021. This one is called Unum Reliquia. I'm looking forward to giving you my thoughts on this, what is another incense-based fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I tell you all about Unum Reliquia by Filippo Sorcinelli, and I give you my thoughts on the smell, the performance, comparisons, so on and so forth, I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode. It would really mean a lot to me. Now, I do want to mention that this this bottle is available for purchase at Fragrapedia House. I'm going to leave all of the appropriate links down below. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not making any commission off of that link. I just want to bring you the best place where you can acquire this fragrance from, which is where I acquired my bottle from. So I hope you enjoy it, especially if you're a fan of incense. I think there's a lot of really amazing things to be discovered about this fragrance. Now, I did a review of Unum Labs, which is an amazing amazing incense-based fragrance. Olibanum or frankincense was not listed in the note breakdown, but I smelled that fragrance and that's the first thing that I got. It just smelled like lemon and pine and it's a beautiful fragrance. One that I would compare to something like a full incense by Montal or Cardinal by Healy. But this fragrance actually does take things in a slightly different direction. There is orange blossom, there's sweet orange, there's mastic oil, also known as lentisque, there's tobacco, there's cloves, there's amaris, there's a bunch of other really wonderful ingredients, but at the heart of this fragrance still sits the incense, a little bit of smoke, and pine. So I'm really excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, also let you know why I think it's such an amazing fragrance for the winter months. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. Now, the first thing that I want to start things off by saying is that the name Reliquia translates to relic. And I think it also comes from the Latin relinquo, which means I leave. So this fragrance almost kind of has like this, you know, ancient artifact type of a sensory experience to it. It definitely smells like something quite ancient. These, you know, ancient resins that have been around for thousands and thousands of years, if not longer than that. But of course, in terms of uh, references in famous texts, especially religious texts, we're talking a few thousand years ago. So here we have mastic oil or lentisk. We also have elemi resin and you smell this fragrance it smells so wonderful. It's so different. It's so unique. It's not your run-of-the-mill fragrance and it's not these typical compliment getter, you know, citrusy, aquatic types of fragrances. This fragrance is bold. This fragrance does things differently. This fragrance is not afraid to be unique and original and creative and it's such an amazing fragrance. So in the opening, you do get a little bit of these orangey facets. There's a bit of sweet orange, orange blossom as well, like I mentioned. And I think it combines with the tobacco and the elemi to bring you this fullness. So it's a bit resinous. There's a smoothness in the base. There's also sandalwood in here. So I think that adds to it as well. It's a bit smooth, creamy, sweet, musky, not overly sweet. As a matter of fact, the sweetness in this fragrance is like 5%, right? Whatever natural sweetness is kind of occurring as a byproduct of the resins. That's the, the brunt of what you're gonna get in this fragrance. It's actually very resinous. You do kind of get like these raw resins or the sensation of which is really sitting at the forefront of this fragrance. Now, I looked at the note breakdown and it also says smoke. I don't get anything too smoky from this fragrance where, you know, if you think of fragrances like Poltergeist by Heretic Parfum or Interlude for Men by Amouage, like that's smoke. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're gonna smell a lot of smoke there. This smells a bit more raw. It almost kind of smells like the unlit resins, the unlit incense, right? Where it hasn't hit the charcoal briquette yet and it hasn't been warmed up and you know, there no smoke has been produced from it. And I really love that combination of the mastic and the elemi. And the pine is a little earthy, but it's not overdone. The tobacco is, you know, you wouldn't even know there's tobacco in here unless you looked at the note breakdown and then it finally clicked. So I love that here we have an incense based fragrance that is not all about the incense or like 90% about the incense. There's so many other things happening in this fragrance that really bring it together. A touch of patchouli as well, if I'm remembering. At least that earthiness is a nice compliment and a nice back and forth between the pine and the patchouli. So it's not just one of those ingredients stealing the spotlight, so to speak, but they both kind of work in harmony with one another. Wow. This is truly a sensory experience, like I mentioned. If you think of the name and you look at the presentation and you read the description of the fragrance and what the inspiration was, it really puts you in this meditative state of mind where you just grow this natural appreciation for these wonderful ingredients that come from the earth and have been around since biblical times and before that. It's truly a marvel and I'm so, so glad to have this fragrance in my collection. I've seen this really unique bottle floating around the internet for such a long time now and I said eventually I want to try it but I wanted to acquire Unum Labs first. Once I got you know a feel for what that fragrance was all about now I can smell the follow-up or the sequel if you will to that fragrance and this one knocks it out of the park. It is one of the most unique and one of the most interesting fragrances I've ever smelled in my life, but I must warn you, it's not an easygoing compliment getter type of a fragrance. If you are an expert, if you are somebody who's very well versed in the fragrance game, somebody who has tried a lot of fragrances, somebody who knows what the common popular designers are all about, and you're seeking a really unique and individualistic experience, please try Unum Reliqua by Filippo Sorcini. Cinelli. It's such an amazing fragrance and one of the coolest presentations I've ever seen. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, given the fact that this is an incense-based fragrance, I was trying to make comparisons to other incense fragrances that I've tried throughout the years or that I even own. That was the case with Unum Labs. I was able to compare it to Incense Avignon by Comme des Garçons, Full Incense by Montal, and many other incense-based fragrances that really put Olibanum at the forefront. This fragrance has so much else happening in here that it truly is a unique and sensual sensorial experience and I can't say enough good things about it. Longevity 10 plus hours. Projection was not too heavy. So for the first hour, it radiated within an arm's length. It became an elbows length scent right around hour six and the skin scent right around hour nine or 10. So the projection isn't overly loud. And I think the reason for that is because there isn't a hodgepodge of citrus ingredients that really brighten it up and make it super volatile. You do get the orange, but it's kind of grounded by the orange blossom, which is grounded by the woods and all these other darker fixative ingredients. Versatility on this one, I think people will argue it leans traditionally masculine because of the incense and the pine and the patchouli and some of these other darker ingredients, especially the earthy ones. However, I find that it's truly unisex. Where would you love at the end of the day? Perfect for the colder weather, perfect for a formal occasion, great for somebody who's a little bit older and a little bit more experienced with dealing with niche fragrances. The presentation, one of the absolute coolest presentations that I've ever seen with the nail and the color of the bottle and that sort of copper golden hue. So the nail in the coffin or my overall assessment, if you will, is this is one of the most unique fragrances I've ever tried in my life. I own close to 3,000 fragrances, some of the most unique fragrances where the first time I ever smelled them, I was in awe. L'Air du Desert Marocain by Tower Perfumes. You know, Comme de Garçon Eau de Parfum that smells like industrial glue and packing tape. Of course, Nasomato Black Afghano. Some of these fragrances, you smell it and you're like, wow, what is that? This is an experience that I haven't had for several years and I was left totally in awe when I smelled this fragrance and I can't sing enough praise about it. I love this stuff. Not for the faint of heart, try it, get a sample of it first. You know I don't recommend blind buys but I love Unum Reliqua by Filippo Sorcinelli. It's a masterpiece.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell, give this video a thumbs up. Love you guys. Check this fragrance out. Fragrapedia House has it. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.